Hugh Lacane, born May 27, 1914, and died July 3, 1977, was a physicist, composer, and instrument builder. Lacane was brought up in Port Arthur, now Thunder Bay, in northwestern Ontario, Canada. At a young age, he began making musical instruments and immediately found a passion. One of Lacane's most acknowledged pieces is Dripsody, which I'll be discussing with you today. Though his composition output was rather small, Lacane is remembered as one of the great pioneers, uh, pioneer composers of musique concrete, his best known work being Dripsody, like I mentioned before, which is a piece of musique concrete based on the sound of a single drop of water that over the course of the piece is permuted and contorted into a variety of sounds. Lacane used a metal wastebasket filled with two inches of water, held an eyedropper 10 inches above the wastebasket, and tape recorded the water drops for 30 minutes, which is a lot harder way of how we can do things today. After reviewing the resulting recording, Lacane selected one of the water drops and spliced it onto a short loop. And basically what this did is this allowed the water drop to repeat like a traditional figure. Lacane wrote down rhythmic figures he felt stimulated the sound of water drops in the process, and then he decided how loud to make each figure so it came together nicely. And basically what he would do, uh, he would write down a corresponding decibel number while doing that. He correlated the time values of rhythms with different lengths of tape. Coming back to the tape recorder, Lacane used that new tool to perform five kinds of operations or manipulations all with a different effect. So he had one water drop and completely blew everybody away with his creativity and ways of how he was able to do so much with so little at the time. Um, but the first of the five operations or manipulations uh, with a different effect that he used, the first one was the changing of tape speed. Um, which was actually his primary technique. The faster the tape is played, the higher the pitch and vice versa. So this is something that he figured out and that from that day on would be a huge piece of music concrete. Um, tape speed is measured by a unit called IPS or inches per second. So slowing a recording by half lowers all pitches by an entire octave. So this was a super useful technique for him and many other uh, composers in electronic music. He sometimes, in the process of creating the keyboard, assembled the pitches into a pentatonic scale pattern, or a five-note scale pattern. Uh, now moving on to the second operation that he used to make Dripsody and contort that sound of uh, the water drop, is uh, this, the second operation's objective was to play the recorded sound backwards to give you a new sound that was made from the original. Uh, and also reversing the direction of the tape. Acoustically, the effect is to, is to change the amplitude envelope. And what we normally experience with amplitude is, for example, pressing a key on a piano, a loud sound emerges, then slowly fades away. The second, the second operation that Hugh Lacane used was the exact opposite of this. Um, and Lacane also used four different tape loops to produce the ostinato patterns that you hear. In Dripsody, uh, three different speeds create 12 different loops, not needing to add additional splices. Uh, however, he did use splices at his fourth operation. Um, splicing different pitches resulted from playback speeds of initial drop. Um, sorry, splicing different pitches would result from different playback speeds of initial drop. And um, splicing different yeah, only 25 splices were used to compose this entire piece, which made him very proud. Why wouldn't it? And the multi-track recorder controlled all other variations. So this was super ahead of his time in 1955 when Dripsody came out. And the last, last but not least, the fifth operation was the use of tape delay, not speeding up, not slowing down, but delaying it. Um, not to be confused with the same term used on in the television world, that means to postpone broadcast. This is different. To Lacane, it was an echo effect he produced by playing a sound on the recorder while re-recording the same so the sound at the same exact time. And the new recording had a lower amplitude and created an echo-like sound. The thing for me that 
is super interesting about Lacane is that he was he was just so ahead of his time and he was able to use so many different techniques out of his own imagination that really set the way for electronic music composers today and throughout. Um, and so to end off, Lacane basically spent one night manipulating his initial drop sound. Um, only one night initiating, only one night manipulating that sound. And the overall work could be considered pro programmatic. It is similar to the ebb and flow of a rain shower. So by just taking this one drop of sound and doing all sorts of different things to it, he kind of made it seem like it was actually raining, but really it was just all of these different effects that he was adding on to a single drop. Dripacity is one of the most frequently played examples of music concrete, which means it's obviously a super important piece uh, technologically for people. But Lacan remained modest. Once when he was asked why he chose the name Dripsity, he simply replied, because it was written by a drip. That is all I have for today, and I hope everyone is well.